Welcome to our review on distillation. So we're going to look at two types of distillation in this review video. The first one is simple distillation. Now we would use simple distillation to separate a solvent from a solution. And this actually relies on the fact that the solvent has a lower boiling point than the solute. If it didn't, then obviously we wouldn't be able to collect the solvent. So what actually happens here is you've got your piece of equipment on the right hand side there. So in our round bottom flask, we've got our impure solution. We have then got that connected into this little tube that goes down and you can see it's got water that runs along the side. And the whole idea behind that is to actually cool down the gas. So that bit of equipment is called a condenser. And then we've just got a test tube or a beaker on the right hand side to collect the actual liquid that we're condensing. So all we do here is you apply heat to the bottom and then as soon as we actually get to the solvent's boiling point, it's going to turn into a gas, rise up, go down that tube. And then as that water cools it down, it's going to condense and turn to liquid. And that point, it just drips out the bottom where we can collect it in the test tube. The second type of distillation we need to know about is one called fractional distillation. Now your equipment setup is again in that diagram on the right there. And the key bit of equipment that we have here is something called a fractionating column. And that's the bit that you can see sticking out the top of the round bottom flask. That then connects onto a condenser once more because we still need to cool those vapors down into some form of a liquid. Now, the way that this is going to work is it's going to allow us to separate two or more substances from a mixture in the liquid state. So what we're able to do here is if we've got a mixture of different liquids, then we can actually separate them out into their individual entities. But it does rely on one key fact that all of those substances present within our mixture must have different boiling points. So what we do is we start off by heating our actual round bottom flask with our mixture in it. And then what we'll find is the substance with the lowest boiling point will turn to a gas first. So that means that it's going to rise up through the fractionating column and then it's going to come down the condenser. Now, what we'll find is only the substance with the lowest boiling points will come out first of all, because as we go away from the heat, obviously the fractionating column gets cooler. So there's that temperature gradient in it. So it's warmer at the bottom and cooler at the top. But the longer we heat it for, then the warmer the fractionating column gets. So what we will actually find is initially we will just collect one substance. But if you kept heating, then we would actually find you could collect others as time goes on. But generally speaking, we would use this to separate something like our little example there, which is an ethanol and water mixture. Now, ethanol's boiling point is much lower. It's only 78.4 degrees Celsius compared to water's 100 degrees Celsius. So as we heat it up, ethanol is going to turn to a vapor before the water. It'll rise up through the fractionating column. And then as it passes down the condenser, it's going to turn into liquid ethanol and collect in the container on the right hand side. Water, however, is not going to be coming out that end because even if the actual bottom of our flask there has hit 100 degrees and therefore it is starting to turn to gas, we will find that as it goes up the fractionating column, it's actually going to be cooler. Therefore, it's going to condense and then just fall back into the flask. Hopefully at the end of this review video, you now know the difference between simple distillation and fractional distillation. You know the names of the key bits of equipment involved in them and can explain how each of those processes works.